Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode. Actually, the first episode. We have probably, I don't think there could literally be a better guest when it comes to talking about your personal brand. Ladies and gentlemen, he's been quoted in Forbes. He's been quoted in Wall Street Journal. The dude is known as the modern day Wizard of Oz. He's a number one time bestseller author of blue fishing and ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you guys haven't read blue fishing, I mean this from the sincere, from the most sincere place I could ever come from. Blue fishing changed my life. Blue fishing changed my mentality, my mindset. And especially when it came to building a brand, there literally is nobody else better than Steve Sims. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the master himself. What's up, Steve? Wow, how am I supposed to follow that? You could have shot a little bit lower so people would kind of like, you know, go, okay, let's see if we can get out of that. But I, I got to back that up now. So I'll try. Oh, try, dude. You're going to absolutely crush it. I mean, literally, when I first read Blue Fishing, I, I, was, I was so blown away by it because the things that you accomplished and what we're talking about this in particular on the show on Brandon Shred is all about your brand. Your brand was everything. And you have such an amazing story in Blue Fishing. My, chapter 10, guys, if you, chapter 10 in particular talks about personal branding. And Steve kind of has a funny story. You made this. I think you call it the worst picture ever. Isn't that what it's called? Or there's like a subtitle in the book. It's called the worst picture ever. And oh, you talk the, the car. Yeah, the car, the car. Yeah. And, you know, I believe in Monte Carlo, right? Is where yeah. it was. Or you, you yeah. take this picture. But before we get into all that, for those who may not know you, Steve, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you got today and how you got there. All right, I'll make it quick. I'm a, a bricklayer from East London that didn't like being poor. So I wanted to surround myself with rich people. Um, try to do it by the normal ways because basically I came from a, a period of time where I didn't have social platforms to show me how inadequate my life was. I also didn't have the abundance of opportunities we've got today from podcasts, courses, online mentors. We didn't have any of that. So it was just a gut reaction. That I wanted to surround myself with someone that knew what they were talking about rather than someone that talked a good talk in the local pub. Um, I went out to try and get a job, uh, failed, 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 ended up creating my own. I created a access point. I was a concierge to the very rich and powerful, not the rich and famous, mm. the people behind those people with more money. And along the way, I ended up closing down museums in Florence for dinner parties, getting people married in the Vatican by the Pope, sending them down a Titanic, drum lessons with guns and Roses, walking the red carpet with Sir Elton John. Anything that you could dream of, and more importantly, afford, I was the guy that pulled it off. Um, but what a lot of people found a bit amazing was that, hey, I would just turn up on a motorbike. I was like 240 pound of ugly biker <laughs> that just happened to be able to pull this shit off. And then when I wrote the book, I think it gave permission to a lot of people to be able to do what they'd always wanted to do but for some reason, they were just petrified to try. Mm. Um, and that was it. I ended up writing a book. I now coach. I now speak, as you know, because we keep bumping into each other. Yeah. Um, and now we we help people kind of define their brand, their marketing, their voice, their tonality. And it's been a fantastic journey. And, of course, I've been able to garnish that information from, you know, people that I have on speed dial now, from Richard Branson to Elon Musk. Gee, well, I mean, I say Elon Musk is among those people now one of the, I mean, the wealthiest person and you're rubbing elbows with these guys. It's just so, but here's the thing that gets me so excited about it, Steve, is you did it from your brand. Like you mentioned, starting as a bricklayer son, starting from that background, it's your brand. It's you. How, how do you define brand? Because there's so many people <laughs> like, what does that mean to you? What is that Steve Sims? What does that, that mean? That is the, that is singly the best question that could ever be asked. Okay. What is branding? Okay. So many people get that answer wrong. Mm. And I'm going to call them out as assholes yes. because branding, quite simply, there was only one answer to what is branding. Branding is what people say about you when you've left the room. Now, you can try and do a pretty website. If a guy's got a shoe store, and it sells yellow shoes, blue shoes, and green shoes. But everyone in the room is talking about you selling yellow shoes, then you're branded as the person 
that sells yellow shoes. You can try to control or create that narrative, that story, that logo, that slogan. But the bottom line of it is, it's your tribe, your culture, your followers, your people, your customers. It's what they say that dictates your brand. So that's what you've got to do. You've got to focus on what do I want people to say and then make you as simple as possible for them to be able to tell other people about what you do and who you are. I think that's something that you mentioned, Steve. It's got to be simple. You can't overcomplicate a brand. Like you said, it's, I literally, the fact that you said that literally gave me goosebumps because I've said that in the past. I'm pretty sure I stole it from you. You originally shared it with me. It's it's what people <laughs> say, literally like after you left the room, whether you're in sales, mortgage, real estate, whatever background you come from, once you've less, left the room, what what are they saying about? What is that? What is that relationship, that trust, that confidence you built? But sometimes we, especially as marketing people, if we have marketing backgrounds, we complicate branding. Sometimes we think it's a logo, a slogan, this or that. But what you just defined it as so simply, that's what really makes an impact. That's what's making a difference when it comes to your brand. Do you know the funny thing is, if you go back in your car over the last 40 seconds, you just contradicted yourself. Mm. Okay. You actually said at the beginning, after I'd made my statement, you said, well, you can't complicate. And then you said, as marketers, we do. We do. Now, you see, that's the problem. We get too smart for our own good, and we try to put in big words that complicate and confuse people. See, the bottom line of it is no one will ever do business with you if they are confused. <sighs> so what you've got to do is you've got to look at everything you do and say, okay, can I explain what I do? And more importantly, can it be repeated to me by a four-year-old? <laughs> if a four-year-old can tell someone what you do for a living, then you've got your message in spot on. But nine times out of 10, as you're right, we think we're smart. We think we're great marketers. Worst thing, we think we're great branders. We, we overcomplicate what it is we actually do and to who, and that's where the problem is. And that's when did it, I have to ask this because again, you, you've done this so amazingly over your, you know, your career and your life. When did you realize, was there a time in your life when you're like, okay, my personal brand, you share some stories in blue fishing, you know, getting inside clubs, getting to certain places, like you said, getting, getting people serenaded within the Vatican. All the, when did you realize that you're like, Hey, you know what? The Steve Sims brand, my brand. When did you realize that was like crucial to your future success? Do you know, funny enough, probably only about 10 years ago. Really? Yeah. Do you know why? If I told you to go down to the hardware store and pick up, you know, pot of paint, mm -hmm. you would just turn up and you'd pick up a pot, a pot of paint. You're solving my problem by getting the pot of paint. Okay. Sure. You're not wor worrying about your clothing. You're not worrying about doing your hair. You're just going and getting what I need to solve my problem. Now, I realized very early on that I wanted to get in the room with very, very rich, powerful people. The only way to show up is to solve. Mm. You know, let that simmer for a second. That's so deep. I knew that if I could solve someone's problem, I had their attention. I had that gratitude. And if I kept doing it, I had that loyalty and commitment. Now, you see, none of that has anything to do with how pretty my website is Ooh. or how eloquent I sound or the, the pretty gold em embossing on my business card. You know, none of that mattered. If you can solve someone's problem, none of the other shit matters. Now, I was so focused on turning up to a club to help you get in, introducing you to Elton John, getting you a walkthrough at SpaceX with Elon Musk. I was so focused on that goal to get you needed what you needed that I was just a thug in the corner in a black T-shirt turning up on a motorbike. See, I never paid attention to myself. Mm -hmm. I paid attention to you. And so that ended up, without me realizing it, people were, and again, think about the room when you've left the room, people were like, oh, you got to meet this. Hey, he's going to roll up on a super loud motorcycle. Ignore that he looks as though he's turned up to kill you. <laughs> Listen to the guy, because he's going to get you what you need. And so all of a sudden, I didn't realize it, 
but I was creating my brand. Now, you mentioned about the worst picture. The second I started to think about it, I do what all entrepreneurs do, we screw it up. Oh. I try to create a new brand of myself. I go, you talk about a picture. I bought a vintage Ferrari. I dressed up into, I killed my brand by becoming someone who I wasn't. Wow. Luckily, we caught that and went back to being the guy that just turns up on a motorbike. And you, you mean you have met. Yeah. We've met a few times. We've done podcasts. Would it have surprised you if I'd have turned up on this podcast with a suit and tie? Oh, yeah. I would have been like, what the hell? Yeah. Who is this? The bottom line of it is everywhere you show up, you need to be you. Now, here's a little thing for your branding guys out there. Anyone that's trying to brand, here's a little lesson for you. On a desktop or on a laptop, not on a phone, not on a tablet, open up multiple browsers next to each other. And then on those browsers, open up your social feeds, your mm. Twitter, your LinkedIn, your Instagram, your Pinterest, your TikTok, your Tinder, whatever it is, open it up on different browsers. And then when they're all up there, read the bio to yourself. Mm. Look at the pictures. You see, this is what happens. You go on LinkedIn and the guy's there in a sharp suit and he's looking all, you know, serious and debonair and he's leaning up against a, a library of loads of books and he's holding a cigar and he looks very regal. You get over to Facebook and he's in a sauna with a bunch of boys and it's looking like a frat party. <sighs> you see, you've got to make sure not to confuse your clients by showing up the exact same person everywhere apple Whoa. doesn't change the logo you don't see a different logo for apple on tiktok than you do on pinterest why because it's apple mm. you think oh no i've got to be really serious on linkedin hey but i can be playful over here on on facebook no you can't you have to be exactly who you are everywhere that's why on linkedin there's me with a glass of whiskey in my hand i got an old fashioned there why because that's the same person i am on facebook that I am on TikTok, that I am in real life. Black t-shirt, old-fashioned, bald head, piercings, calling it as I see it. You will never mistake who I am wherever I show up. Dude, this is so brilliant. By the way, Steve's drink of choice is old-fashioned. Every time I've hung out with him, I think old-fashioned, and that's just him, like hanging Fair out enough. with him when we're at the bar, like at that old-fashioned he's got in his hand. But So I want to go to this point. I want to go deeper on this because what you're talking about, everybody listening to this, this is starting to resonate with them because they, they're starting to think, they're like, okay, and I, I take Steve's challenge. Go open up your different social profiles. And even if you have one or two, if you, even if you just have Facebook and LinkedIn, pull up the different pictures because I see exactly what you're talking about. And especially in professionals, like in mortgage, real estate, sales, whatever it is, they have all this suit and tie. People are asking themselves right now, Steve, they're like, well, wait a minute. I'm a professional. I, the, I've got to have a time. I've got to have a time to loosen the tie, to, to relax a little bit. I, how, how do you tell those people? Because you and I both know, you and I both experienced it. Like our friends know who we are. They have a bullshit meter. They see through it. What do you tell people? How do you help people break through that mental, like that blockage of like, well, wait a minute. When, when do when am I supposed to be professional? When am I supposed to be me? So let's break that down. What is professional? Hmm. The word professional means that you get paid. So that's your profession. Your profession, what you earn an income in, is what you do for a living. That's you can be a professional, you know, car washer, you can be a professional paper boy, you can be a professional realtor. But what you earn money in is your profession that makes you a professional. Okay. Got Buckle it. to do with a tie and suit. Okay. Your profession is solving someone's problem and earning money from providing that solution. Okay. Now, the realtor market, let's be blunt. We can have a right little giggle here. Oh, How okay. many people are still using pictures from when they did a soft porn shoot from the 1980s <laughs> where there's this lovely haze and they're leaning and they're pouting on it? It's hysterical, okay? The point is that you are there to solve the problem. Now, let me ask you a question. Yeah. When the client turns up to get involved with you, are they turning up in a suit and tie or are they turning up in a T-shirt? Hmm. See, I have a friend of mine that owns the largest Ferrari dealership in uh, Texas. And he said the guy that turns up on a Saturday and a suit and tie, he can't afford a Ferrari. But the guy that turns up in shorts and, and sandals on a Tuesday, 
He's on his fifth. Whoa. You see, the bottom of it is professionalism is your attitude, your sincerity, and your ability to solve someone else's problem. That's what professionalism is. How you hold yourself accountable. How you achieve what's necessary for the client. That's all. Pro- what you look like, that's icing. Okay? Stop focusing on that. Okay? Am I mm. not a professional? Can I not solve Elon Musk's problem? Can I not get you married in the Vatican? Can I? I have that credibility. It's undoubtable. Okay? Because there's a record of me doing it but I've never turned up as anything different. So focus on your attitude and mindset, not the prettiness. Now, I know a lot of you out there going, you've got to look a certain way. Hey, if that makes you comfortable, that's the first thing. If you are comfortable dressing like that to do your job, great. But then I take you back to the social challenge. Do you look like that in all of your profiles? Are you the same person? I'm going to pick on a guy, Courtney Buford. Okay. Sure. I don't know if you've, have you come across Courtney Buford? I before? have. Absolutely. All right. Courtney Buford, big black, lovely man. Yep. All right. Does jujitsu, rides a motorbike every now and then. He's always dressed dapper and he's with Simply Vegas, John Gafford's brilliant group. Same thing can be said for John Gafford, although he's not big and black, but he's still beautiful. <laughs> but sticking with Courtney, Courtney wears some amazing suits. Oh, brilliant suits. That nobody else could wear. He's inexcusably, unapologetically Courtney. Hmm. Okay. You meet Courtney and he's coming to some of my events. We've become friends over the year. He shows up. He's Courtney. Wherever he is, that's Courtney. He has the ability to show up. Branding is knowing what that person's going to show up as. I'm all about style, demeanor, attitude, professionalism, mindset. It's never changed. I've never seen him. He's been up. He's been down. He's been quiet. He's been loud. But he's always been corny. Mm. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to make sure that when you show up, you are unmistakable to anyone else. And you do that. Here's the thing. By not trying to be somebody else. Courtney's Courtney. Okay. But how many people get a job in a bank and all of a sudden they're wearing a pinstripe suit? Or right. they get a job in Silicon Valley and all of a sudden they're wearing hoodie and ripped up jeans. Everyone tries to be something else to what you think, oh, that's what my industry looks like. Be you. You were born individual. You grew up individual. And then you started to pretend to be somebody else. Mm. Stop that. Be you. Show up as you. And stop apologizing for it. Let's see. I'll say this quite clear. Be Courtney. Show up as you. There you go. Shallow plug to Courtney. You owe me a couple of drinks there. Please. I was going to say, Courtney, you, oh, you definitely owe Steve a couple of drinks for sure. This is such, again, especially mortgage real estate. You know my backgrounds and that. That's where you yeah. and I met multiple times. You see a lot of people. And they when I first started showing up in a t-shirt and a hat, you when you and I first met, my, I'm known for my hat and my t-shirt. Yep. People gave me so much shit. I was going to these professional, like I was going to Inman in New York where everybody, three-piece <laughs> suits. And I was just, I mean, my first video that went viral was, was there. People were like, oh, who is this kid? You and I, I wasn't apologizing. I'm like, I'm going to be me. This is who I'm comfortable. It doesn't matter. Most of you people who are giving me shit, I've done more business than like, don't don't tell me I can't be a, a mortgage professional or real estate professional dressing the way I am. I I surround myself with the same with like-minded people. What you're talking about, Steve, is so powerful. And everybody listening to this, this is coming from somebody, like you said, that he rubs elbows with Elon Musk. He's He's hung out with Ellen John. He hangs out with the best, the most powerful people in the world. And Steve Sims will always be Steve Sims. Like there's no, there's no faking it. And if you did, like I said, if you would have shown up in anything other than your black shirt, Steve, I would have been like, well, what's up? Like there's something, there's something, there's something Something's different wrong here. with him. All yeah. right. Like, there must be something, there must be something going on. So you have to continue to be you. Now I want to talk about something in your book that resonated so, so probably profound is the best word to put it. You call it the chug test. And I think this has to do with a brand because sometimes people, when they're trying to grow their network, when they're trying to grow their business, they're trying to build this brand that they're like, Hey, I want, you know, I want this, this plethora of people. I want, I want to connect with everybody, like everybody, but that's just not the case. When we're building a brand, there's a specific 
group. Some people call it a niche, whatever you want to call it, but you call it the chug test that you connect with the people. Are you willing to, you know, hang out with these people? Let's talk about the chug test when it comes to a brand. So when I tried to get more business, I discovered something that was a bit weird. Um, I was making more money and I had more clients and I had less connection. Hmm. When that kind of doesn't make sense, does it? No. You know, I would I would go down prior to this, hang out in a bar, go for a bike ride, you know, hang out at a pub, go to a nice restaurant, go to a nice gala, and I would be able to have conversations with my people. But all of a sudden, I couldn't connect with certain people that I was doing business with. They were paying me money. I was doing well out of it, but I was losing the connection. Why? Because I was diluting who I was. And I didn't mm. like it. So one day I woke up and I thought to myself, I'm going to run a different thing. Um, I'm going to come up with a philosophy in which I can gauge how I bring people into my life. And I thought to myself, all right, you're walking up the high street and it's got two lanes of opposing traffic going up and down. And you're walking up the high street, and on the right-hand side of the high street, coming towards you, on the other side of two lanes of traffic, is somebody in your world. Hmm. Your accountant, your salesman, your partner, your someone in your relationship, your brother-in-law, your best sales member, anything, your receptionist, anyone in your life. What's your instant reaction? Do you quickly turn left, look in the window of whatever store you're looking at and pretend as though, oh, you're looking at a new mattress and watch the reflections they go past you and then quickly turn your head and pretend as though you didn't see them? Mm. Or do you run across two lanes of traffic, risking life and limb to jump in front of them and go, man, how you doing? Let's have a beer. Let's have a coffee. Which one do you? And I thought to myself, I only want to challenge my life running across traffic to jump in front of people that I want to be with. Mm. And so I literally went to my wife and I said, we're going to do an audit. We're going to clean up our life. And I told her the story about this chug test, which actually came to me in a dream. She was like, that's stupid. <laughs> Let's try it. Because isn't the most simple things like stupid, simple things? You know, so we literally started going through. And that afternoon, we we spoke to our accountant. God, this man was depressing. Mm -hmm. Every time he's on the phone, accountants aren't supposed to be, you know, joke tellers. But this guy was like, oh, Steve, yeah, I've been looking at your taxes. And I said to Claire, I can't speak to this guy. He's so depressing. I don't want to have a conversation with him. And so we got rid of him. Now I get my account and he's like, well, you're making too much money. That's going to bite you in the ass. But let's see what we can do. That's what I want. You know, I want to be able to communicate with people. And so we literally went through everyone in our life, even some of those really close to us, and got rid of them. I actually got rid of my top salesperson that was like three times better than anybody else in my firm. Whoa. But Jesus Christ, I didn't want to talk to her. You know, she was so annoying, so arrogant, so cancerous, so toxic that I got rid of her. And I remember going to my first sales meeting now that she was gone and all my other sales team were going to be there. And I was like, what are they going to say about me? I've just fired my top person. How does that make sense? And um, any other vein other than I don't want to talk to them. And when I got there and I said to him, look, okay, we're going to have to take on the workload that she was handling. Are you okay with that? And do you know what? One of the people turned around. They turned around and they went, why did it take you so long, Steve? We hated her. Wow. I was like, Sh why don't you tell me? <laughs> and they're like, well, it's your top salesperson. You've got to stop looking at the dollars and you've got to start looking at the culture that mm. you create and that you live within. And if the culture is toxic, it's wrong. Oh, Bottom man. line of it. I, and that is, that's bottom line is you're building your brand as you're starting to surround yourself with these people, you have, they have to be the people that you're willing to run across traffic for the people that you would be like, like you said, are you willing to risk life and limb to see these people? If not, it's just like, Hey, why? Like, and especially yep. it, Steve, you mentioned something in the beginning of this, you know, you kind of, you, your career started far before social media. 
far before social media. You had to find ways to because I'm old. Well, we're, we're going to say because you, you, you have experiences outside of social media and you actually talk about this because when it comes to building a brand, so many of us, we look at the thumbs up we're getting, we get the, we're looking at the likes, we're looking at that as one of the biggest factors as us building a successful brand, as us building a successful business. But honestly, when I, I've listened to that chapter time, I've listened to you say it so many times is don't waste our time counting likes. Like you, we cannot do that. And especially as you're starting this journey of your personal brand, it has to be thought of so, so much more than that. How are you connecting with these people? How is that for you, Steve, as we start to wrap things up here, not wasting time on likes, how do you get to that mindset? So it hasn't changed until likes can actually pay my bar tab. I have no care about them. Okay. Mm. If I get one fifty five million, hurrah, it's the conversations. Mm. That's what you want to have. Those five conversations, that engagement, that's the thing you want to do. All right. And that's the thing you want to get to. Another little tip for you is if you've got 10 people liking a post, then reach out to those 10 people and go, oh, why did that resonate with you? What did you think? It will scare some of these people away because a lot of people like to like things and move on. Sure. They don't want to be engaged. So when you're addressing them and going, hey, I saw you like that new building. I like. I saw you like that comment. What caused you to like it? What, what did I trigger in you that got a reaction? Try and drag them into a conversation. But today, we only connect by having conversations. We don't connect by liking and as I say, until they can pay your mortgage or your bar tab, don't look at the vanity metrics. Look at the communication. Look at the engagement. That's the power. That that is the power. It's these relationships. It the some of these people, like you said, they may like it and they're going to move on real quick. You may scare those people away, but the people you have those conversations with, the connect those deep, long lasting relationships, those connections, those are what you're looking for. Those are the people that like it. Like going back to what you said, they're the people you're going to run across the room. They're the people that are going to be loyal to you for the rest of your life, yep. and those are the people that you want to surround yourself with. It's just a better style. It's a better way of living life when you have those people. Uh, Matt, Steve, this is literally, it's so fun talking to you because again, so many of these things you talk about, some of them haven't changed. They, some people think that building a brand is so like, it's so difficult and it's so profound and it's, it's not, it's, it's just, not. it's simple. You've actually got to go the other way. Building a brand, you've got to remove the clutter to increase the clarity of the problem that you can solve and then put it in front of the people that you can solve their problem. You've got to remove the complication. Building mm. a brand should be simple and stupid. And again, if your five-year-old can't tell you what you do for a living, you're complicating it. Whoa, my computer, everything. Are we still there? Whoa, that was I'm weird. Here. That was good. I'm glad everything came back. <laughs> everything just shut down for a second. So I'm glad. We're back. I love that. If you're five year old, I've got a seven. I've got a nine and a seven year old, and they can they can kind of. But now you've even made me think about like, hey, how do I go back? How do I simplify it so my nine and my seven year old can explain? I'm I'm excited for that myself. Try it. See, Try I'm, it. I can always learn something from you as well. But I'm excited too. You actually you shared with me. You and your son have teamed up on a project, and we're gonna kind of tease it here. But you our guys have actually partnered together on Sims Media, which is going to be coming out. What, like, that's a big, super exciting for you guys. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it was massive. You see, I've always been about branding, marketing, and tonality, yeah. how to get your message out there, how to get your voice out there. And I've worked with everyone from Elton John's Oscar party to the New York Fashion Week. Yeah. So I've, always, I've, I've been around a lot of these things in which I've helped market and brand and promote. Henry has got an engineering analytical mind. So he's all about the kind of like the algorithms and to how to keep you abreast and how to get your SEO optimized and how to get you organic. And he's your, so he's come at it from one side. I've come at it from the other side. And stupidly, it took us about, I don't know, five years. And then <laughs> last year, we were like, hang on a minute. When you need something, you ask me. When I need something, I ask, why don't we kind of get in this? You know, why don't we like jump in and see if we can form it together? So during COVID or just before COVID, we live, we launched Sims.media and we didn't, there was no, there was just a landing page. We just thought we've got the website. More importantly, we just grabbed the name mm -hmm. um, and then bit by bit it's grown. And funny enough, you talked about the relationships, my relationships I've had, they want to work with me. 
Mm. And so they were coming. I didn't have a fancy website. I didn't have a call to action. I didn't have a funnel process. But they were like, what are you doing now? And I'm like, I'm uncluttering you and getting more people. And we want to be part of that. So we've got luxury brands. We've got top authors. We've got speakers. we got uh, a mate. We got realtors. We've got real estate companies. Wow. We've got lipstick brands. We got a whole load of people that are actually now clients on Sims Media, and when this uh, this comes out, you can actually take over at Sim, uh, take a sniff over at Sims Media and see what we're up to. But I would say before you start even looking at our company or any media organization out there, look internally at how cluttered you, your website, your message, your voice. Look at how much you're confusing the clients that you're looking to attract. Mm. See, the first thing we do, if you if we ever take you on a client as a client, is we get in there and we do some ass kicking Oof. and we try to get all of that shit out of the way. It's a real cleanup. We 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 organize a big yard sale on how complicated you try to be and get that hoisted out of there. That's because like you said, getting back to the basics, you gotta keep it simple. That's super. I'm I'm excited for you. Uh, I've known you for as many years as I have. I followed yeah. you for way well before that. And now seeing, again, you've already built this. You've built your brand. People people are always just looking for opportunities to work with you. What better <laughs> way? And and I mean, transition to work with your son. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so that much. That That's just an experience where it's just like, hey, you know, I mean, you always have a respect for your son, but when you actually see him in his career and just being part of that, that's super exciting. So it is beautiful. I'm excited. So, Steve, I want to thank you for your time. This has been brilliant. As we always end this show, we end it with a couple of random questions here. So I'm going to grab our pod decks. We're going to end with a couple of rapid fire random questions. All right. I'll be I'll be ready and I'll uh, I'll try to give you some good answers. How's that? How's that so, for a promise? Yes. And if you're not familiar with our good friends, this is not sponsored, but our good friends over at Pod Decks always great to do a great job. If you're starting a podcast or trying to figure out ideas, they do a great job. So we always do a random shuffle here, Steve, and then we just come up with a couple of random questions just to get to know Steve a little bit better. So here we go. <laughs> Would you rather go 30 days without your phone or your entire life without dessert? Oh, the phone. Go go without the phone. I don't care. You know, I've got to have my dessert. I need my dessert. <laughs> what, what's your favorite dessert? Let's say, what's that? What's your favorite dessert? If you were to choose one? I, I suppose tiramisu. You know, if I'm wandering around Italy, I, I eat well, I was in Florence recently, and I had way too much tiramisu. Yeah, okay. I like it. All right, next one. Who or where would you haunt if you were a ghost? That's a weird Ooh. one. Ooh, probably me kids. Just to annoy them, you know, because kids are annoying. And any parent out there wants a way of getting back on their kids. So, yeah, I think I, I think I'd annoy my kids. Oh, I like I like that. I, I was going to say, I probably my kids, my my little girl, actually, now that you say that, my little girl loves to scare me. Like her favorite thing to do is like hide and scare the shit out of me. So I'd be coming out and be like, I'm going to haunt you. Like, I'm going to haunt you, little girl. You think you scare me? All right. This is a fun one. And you actually may have a really fun answer to this one. So be, just because you've met some incredible people. Which celebrity chef would you most like to make you dinner? Wow, celebrity chef. Ooh, God, there's so many celebrity chefs out there, but, and I'm only calling them out because, you know, I like him and I know him, but Wolfgang Puck's just hysterical. Really? Um, so, yeah, but I think, I think if I was doing it, I would have, and I'm trying to think of her name. Um, God, there was a famous um, British woman that wrote, uh, I'm trying to think of the books that she did. Um, oh, she's dead now, but I would probably have to go back in time and it'd have to be her. Huh. So either her or Wolfgang, Wolfgang Puck. I like uh, Yeah, those. Wolfgang Puck is a, is a modern one, that's, and he's still alive, thankfully. Well, there you go. Guys, that's that's why we do these random questions because you get some really fun answers. Steve, you were absolutely brilliant. Guys, go check out Steve on all social media platforms. Just Steve Sims. And now go check out, you'll have to keep an eye out for sims.media. Go check that out. Kind of get a little prequel to what you're going to be seeing. I'm stoked for him. And Steve, Steve and I even said this prior to it. We're both media companies, but there's still, there's so much opportunity to collaborate. Oh, yeah. so, so many opportunities to share. Steve has an audience that I don't quite tap into. I have an audience that he doesn't quite. It's just that, that's how we collaborate. And I want to thank him so much for being part of this, for willing to share. There was so much. Guys, go back and listen to this episode time and time again. I guarantee you it's going to help you on your journey of building a brand. Steve, you're absolutely incredible. You're so, so incredibly inspiring. Thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate it. Appreciate it for having me. Thanks a lot. All the best.
Guys, thank you again for joining us on another episode of Brandon Shred. Make sure you stay tuned and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode. We'll be, be back here next week. Every Tuesday, you can get another episode of Brandon Shred. With that, guys, as always, we appreciate you. We love you. Now it's time for y'all to go shred. Go show up, hustle, repeat every day. See ya. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much again for joining us on another episode of Brand and Shred. I hope you got as much value out of this episode as I did. And if you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss a single weekly episode with the incredible guests that we're bringing you to help you build your personal brand. Click that subscribe button, share, and even leave a comment. We appreciate you. We look forward to seeing you next week on another episode of Brand and Shred.